A reminder you can help support the channel by joining the AMTV Patreon. You can also follow us and keep up to date on Twitter at Adam Martin AMTV, or if you like, you can join us here at AMTV by becoming a staff member via the YouTube membership program. Hello, and welcome to the Ident Review Extra, the spin-off show that takes a look at one individual ident each episode and gives it the review it deserves. And this time around, we're embarking on a journey through the ITV network and all the different regional stations that comprised it. And this time, we're looking at the capital city's weekend provider, London Weekend Television. From the summer of 1968, viewers in the London region would have their ITV experience changed forever. Thames Television took up the mantle of weekday broadcasting from Rediffusion London, but the weekend franchise needed to be assigned as well. The previous holder had been Associated Television, or ATV. This company had controlled the London weekend franchise since the inception of the ITV network in 1955, but a new consortium, titled London Weekend Television, would successfully push them out of the capital thanks to their success in the 1968 franchise round. ATV would go on to broadcast all week in the Midlands region, whereas from Fridays after 7pm, London viewers would be greeted with a new face, London Weekend Television, or more simply, LWT. So let's take a look at this familiar name, and how its appearance and presentation evolved over the years. Now on LWT, before our costume drama, more true life stories of the supernatural. It's all enough to make your hair curl. Right now on LWT, to get us into the party mood, Andy Peters is here with a very special birthday edition of The Weekend Show. <laughs> Always reminded me of Colgate this one. Before we get to the colourful days, let's start back at the beginning. The early days of LWT weren't really adorned with a dedicated ident, merely the company's name zooming in towards the screen, accompanied with a quaint little jingle. This soon changed with the arrival of colour in 1969. The new LWT ident was presented primarily in orange, a rather unusual choice compared to many of its peers, who adopted primarily blue and yellow for their first colour sequences. I like the spinning disc notion that we see here, again, it's something that feels a lot more unique and individual than what a lot of the ITV network was going for at the time, deciding to play the concepts more safely and to just focus on presenting them in colour. Although it's noticeable that from this point, for nearly a decade, the word television would be absent from LWT's idents. But this orange design only lasted a year itself, 
for in 1970, a new, and arguably the most iconic LWT ident was introduced to viewers. Affectionately known as the River, we see three stripes of red, white and blue fall down from the top of the screen before forming the letters L and W, the television part of the company name remaining absent. The River is a great ident through and through, a simple design making the best use of the technology of the day, brightly colourful and distinctive from the rest of the network, accompanied by a jingle that I'm sure many generations of viewers could recall if asked. The first version of the River ident would be dominant on screens for most of the 1970s, although in 1978, an updated version came into use. This version followed the same concept as before, although this time, the river broke off into three, spelling out the words LWT, with the full company name finally coming back into screen use, the first time in nearly a decade. Some people prefer the version without television, but for me, this version spelling out the full company name wins it outright. As the 1980s rolled in, it was a great time for change and development. The introduction of computer-generated technology was seen in many idents on TV. Channel 4 was one of the first trailblazers with their inaugural ident in late 1982, and shortly after, in 1983, LWT would become one of the first companies within the ITV network to adopt this new technology. The iconic logo from the 70s remains, now rendered in 3D, alongside a very early 80s musical score and a new slogan. Instead of displaying the company name alongside the initials, the phrase, Your Weekend ITV, was shown instead, arguably a show of strength, celebrating the success that the company had gathered from its programs over the years. Whilst this is somewhat impressive for 1983, I feel this CGI ident lacks a lot of the charm that River had from the 70s. The music, whilst more current for the time, does feel a bit more impersonal and hollow, and whilst the slogan is a nice new addition, I do prefer the full company name displayed instead. A few years later, in 1986, some more CGI idents were commissioned to represent LWT. Now with a predominantly lighter background, the first variant shows the LWT logo fading into place, in a very similar vein to the BBC2 ident that was introduced that very same year. I'm glad the 1970 design of the logo has once again been retained, as that was one of LWT's greatest strengths in its strong appearance, but these idents ultimately feel a little lacklustre and even more disconnected than the first CG effort. The second variant adopts a sliding blind effect, which does make it more interesting, but it's just that the final image feels so bland in comparison to most of what came before. 1989 would see the introduction of the first generic ITV ident, which LWT duly adopted and would use until 1992. The three coloured tones of the LWT logo actually fit quite well in with the design of the first ITV sequence, and it certainly fared better than some other companies did in the network. LWT would return to using its own dedicated idents in 1992, this time going for a more bombastic approach. Multiple blocks fly from the left of the screen, accompanied with a really rousing piece of music, before resolving to form the unmistakable LWT logo, now with the ITV corporate logo stationed beneath it. I think this is a great ident to carry LWT into the 1990s. It's visually appealing, it sounds great, and the final image is simple, but stunningly impactful. This sequence would last until 1996, for which a major change to LWT's look would occur. After over 25 years of using the same principal design first seen in the River ident, LWT's logo was finally amended. The three colours remain, but now completely assigned to each letter. The stripe styling of the letters is also present, but now being comprised of two stripes as opposed to three. The exploding shape at the beginning shoots off tons of tiny blocks that beautifully form the logo, which I think looks fantastic, all punctuated with a new piece of music, which carries over the confident nature of the previous tune, but fits in excellently with what's happening on screen. So, despite the change in the overall LWT look, I think they managed to carry it off in a stunning fashion. Its variants are nice too, such as the Grand Prix version subtly incorporating a racing flag, and the 30 year sequence, which was seen in 1998, using candles and bubbles in an interesting way, all adorning the LWT colours. Towards the end of the millennium, in 1999, ITV would adopt a second generic look, incorporating the theme of hearts throughout. LWT did adopt this look at first, but a little under six months later, they would be dropped, in favour of yet another one of their own efforts. First being seen in early 2000, the video wall, as it was dubbed, is LWT's take on what a 21st century television ident should be like. It's fast pace, lots of media screens flashing about, and a striking final image that really feels grand and vast in its presentation. The 1996 version of the LWT logo remains, keeping a degree of familiarity, with the ITV corporate logo, later renamed to ITV1, taking second place to the franchise holder. The video wall idea is decried by some, but I believe that just as LWT had successfully reinvented itself for the 1990s, it had done so again for the 2000s. It is a shame though that the video wall didn't stick around for too long, or that we didn't see any future 21st century idents, as come 2002, 
all of the regions would fold into one singular name, that being ITV. And while some regional identity would crop up here and there, the era of individual franchises being the front and centre of their presentation had finally come to an end after nearly 50 years. Having started off in shaky circumstances back in 1968, it didn't take LWT long to reinvent its appearance on viewers' screens, and to become one of the most well-known, recognised and revered franchise holders of the entire ITV network. From the introduction of the River Style in 1970, LWT became an instantly recognisable name amongst not just millions of Londoners, but millions across the entire UK, thanks to several of their nationally networked programmes. The familiar red, white and blue tones of LWT lasted for so long because in their simplicity, they just worked. And even with changes and variations in the 1990s and early 2000s, by the time the stations on air branding came to an end in 2002, you could argue that the LWT of the 1970s was still very much present to some degree in the new millennium. So in its near 45 year history as the face of weekends in London, it's no wonder that LWT, alongside its weekday counterpart Thames Television, has gone on to be one of the most celebrated franchises across the ITV network in its long history. And so that brings us to the end of another episode of the IDENT Review Extra. If you enjoyed this look back at LWT, then please leave a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more IDENT related content. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. A special thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special shout out to Macra, an AMTV staff member. Until the next broadcast, we wish you all a good night.